Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WineLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today, I want to talk about exporting your effect sends out of Logic or recording them back into Logic. This was a uh, question that was brought up by a reader named Joe S. And Joe, I really want to thank you for suggesting this as a video. Um, this blog and this YouTube channel is really directed by you, the reader. If you have anything that's burning on in your brain about logic or you have some feedback, I mean, I'm always listening. I'm always responding to comments and emails. Like, I rely on you guys. So thank you again, Joe. So I have a drummer track here, and it's sending to a reverb. And the question is, is how do I get this reverb to export out as an audio file? Or say, I want to record this reverb onto an audio track in Logic so I can, you know power down the send, then I don't need the reverb for processing because I have an audio track of the reverb. Um, or, you know, you want to chop it up or reverse it or whatever. So to accomplish this, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to open the mixer and we're going to navigate to the reverb here. We're going to click on the reverb and we're going to go to option and create a track for the selected channel strip. And what this is going to do is, is this reverb that you see in the mixer is going to appear on the arrange page with its own track lane. I like key commands, so I'm going to hold control T. And now it has introduced a track lane for this reverb. So let's unsolo this track. And I've got drummer sending full blast to this reverb so you can hear it loud and clear. Now, I want to export this reverb out of Logic. I have, uh, I have a huge project, and I want to send it to a mix engineer and have them finish the project, but I've got delays and reverbs and chorus effects that I love, and I want to make sure that they're included in that final master. To do that, I'm going to use the cycle range to decide how much of this I want exported. Now, you, you have to select both the effect send that's in the arrange page and the instrument that is sending to the effect to effectively export it. I don't know why that's the case, but let me show you. If I just select just the reverb and I use key command, command E to export. And I'm gonna export as a wave 24 bit. And I wanna make sure to add the resulting file to the project browser so I can immediately pull it back in from the finder within Logic. So we're gonna export, I open the finder and I bring in this audio file, and you can see that there's absolutely nothing in the file. That's why it's important to also select the instrument that's sending to it. So you're going to see within the browser here what's going to happen. So I'm going to export again, Command E, export. And now we have two audio files, and we bring them into Logic, create a new track, okay. And you can see now there is information contained within. I'm going to solo this, turn off the cycle range. That's the drummer track, and this is the reverb. So very important if you want to export your uh, reverb or delay or whatever out of Logic. But say that you want to record this reverb back into Logic. You have this reverb and you want to, you know, you want to do something with it, but you need an audio file to do it. So the next step is to set the output on this reverb to a bus. We're going to set it to bus three. And bus three is now going to act as an input. Like when you plug your guitar or microphone into your interface input, it's going to act as the input for an audio track. I'm going to bring in a new audio track. And you can see we're already set up for bus three. Create. And now I'm going to record the reverb onto this audio track. And the audio passes right through to this audio track. Let me solo it. Let me turn these guys off. And there we have it. So you have that option. But I don't want to wait three and a half minutes for a track to play through. I, I kind of delved into that in my uh, why balance doesn't change the sound quality of your Logic mixes. And 
I don't want to sit here for three and a half minutes waiting for a reverb to play through and record to another track. That's, I'm not interested in that. I would rather bounce it in place so it's immediately brought into my session as an audio file. But it's a little difficult to do that, right? This is, has no audio contained on the actual track lane. If I use control B, try to bounce in place, it can't because there's no actual regions. That's the key command for bouncing regions in place. If I use control command B, I can bounce the track in place, but watch this. I'm gonna hit okay. And it tried to bounce, but no new lane was created, no new audio region, and no new file was created. So to get around this, and this is my favorite option, honestly, is I'm gonna set my mouse command tool to the pencil tool by hitting key command T. And I'm gonna hold the command key and then go down to the pencil tool and click on it with the mouse. Now, when I hit the command key, it changes to a pencil. I'm gonna use this pencil tool to create an empty region on this reverb. And I'm going to extend that region to the full duration of drummer. And what happens is, is now when I use control B to bounce the region in place, I get the dialogue. It doesn't just tell me what the heck are you doing? I hit okay, it bounces the region and the result is our reverb or delay or chorus or whatever you have on that send. Let me turn these off. And there it is, ready to go. This is my favorite way of handling this because it immediately brings the audio file right into your project. It adds it to the browser. You know exactly what you're getting yourself into because you can see the result immediately. And this technique can be extended to other opportunities as well. So I'm gonna bring in a new software instrument and say I really dig on Kyle's performance here, but I don't want it to be Kyle anymore. I don't want it to be a natural drum kit anymore. Instead, I'd like it to be an electronic drum kit. So I'm gonna open the library. I'm gonna go electronic drum kit, drum machine designer, after party. And I'm gonna convert Kyle here to a MIDI region and I'm gonna bring that MIDI region down to after party. And you can see that this particular instrument has a ton of tracks. Let's play it. And in this case, I wanna bounce just the snare. So I use the pencil tool and I create a region on the snare. And this technique is applicable in this case too because all of these instruments contained within the electronic drum kit or if you use a producer kit within a drum kit designer, these are all just sends. They're not actual tracks. So this is applicable for bouncing an individual instrument down contained within a producer kit or electronic drum kit. So control B. Hit OK, and it's gonna bounce, and there's our snare. So I'm gonna solo, and I'm gonna mute this. Super handy. So you have three options. You have the option to export, you have the option of recording back into Logic, or you have the option of bouncing in place by using the pencil tool. By far, number three is my favorite, and so, the world is yours. Do what you need to with it. If that was helpful to you, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I post new videos, new blog posts. I reply to all comments, all emails, all questions. I'm here for you. Just let me know. Thanks so much.